Hi everyone, my name is Holly Matthews and I'm a speaker, a vlogger, a self-development coach and NLP practitioner and the founder of The Happy Me Project. I'm also a widow and a mom of two girls, Brooke who is nine and Texas who is seven. My husband Ross died of brain cancer in 2017 and since then we've been very supported by Grief Encounter and been really lucky enough to go on some of their getaways as well so they've been an amazing support for us as a family but on this video I wanted to talk to you about grief in this crazy time of pandemic and lockdown and being in our own homes and how we are dealing with that as a family and just offer some support to you guys who are in the midst of having lost a loved one and having children who have lost a parent or a sibling, but also being in this collective sense of grief. So right now, the world, regardless of having lost a person, we are in a collective sense of grief. So we are grieving the loss of weddings and events and being at our partner's birth. We are grieving the loss of the year that we had planned in front of us. So there is this sense of collective grief of the loss of that year. However, for some of you, just like me, you also have children that are grieving the loss of a parent or a sibling, and you yourself may be grieving a partner or, you know, an ex-partner even. And so I wanted just to share some of the things that have come up for us as a family, see if it's relevant to you and perhaps offer some sort of support and, and guidance for that. So I have actually, you know, we're two and a half years down the line. So this is not new, but it's also not old for us. And what I have found personally is that during this time of being in our own space without any distractions, that I've had more time to reflect. And I guess for most of us, anytime there is a sense of sadness in our lives, whether it's pandemic sadness or it's the sadness of something, you know, a film we're watching that's sad, my head can go to the death of my husband. It can go to a dark place. That's kind of what our brains do. It reminds, you know, it, it goes down that path. And, and so I have found during this time that I have found myself thinking one what would he be thinking at all of this you know we reflect on what they would have thought about it all and you know I guess some of you may be thinking would it have been easier if they were here with me would you know what would have happened and we have that time to self-reflect so it's fairly normal that it would come up more heavily in this time and for your children especially when there is talk of death and loss and they know that there's something going on it is unde undeniable that they will go to that place too and they may feel worried. So my daughters have had moments of worry where they've thought, well, what if mum gets this and mum dies? How will that, sh what will happen to us then? And I know that for grieving, for parents of grieving children, that's something we deal with, right? We have to justify our own health. We have to talk them round. I've had my children ask if my heart's still beating certainly that when he when my husband first died that was something that came up a lot and during this we've definitely had some tears and some moments of fear that that might happen now my biggest tip with this is having an open conversation not being scared of what your children will will say and not stifling that conversation our job as the grown-ups is to suck it up and that's hard sometimes because as you know, children are ruthless with their words. They don't have the same filters that we have. So they will ask us things and they will say things that are like, you know, daggers in the heart. And they don't mean that to be the, the way, you know, they just say it that way. So it's our job to suck it up and have those conversations. Because if we don't have open conversations where children can ask us any question of what will happen, what could happen, you know, Anything that they have in their head will, will still be there if we don't acknowledge it. So it's really important that we allow that conversation to be there and to instigate that conversation. You know, what do you know about what's going on? What do you think? Do you have any questions about what is going on? And for me, I have had the children say the obvious, what if you die? And we have all, I've always said to them, look, I cannot say to you that is not an option in the world. But as normal, I say to them, well, you know, we are, we're doing what we're told. We're indoors. We're washing our hands. We're doing all the things we're supposed to. So by all accounts, we're fairly safe right now. 
and we are going to look after ourselves we're going to focus on health and we're not going to focus on worry and i really encourage that to my children i don't deny their emotions it's okay to acknowledge that fear so if they do feel fearful or if you feel fearful or angry about it you know they can also feel angry the children about not seeing their mates not going to school just like we can feel angry about not seeing our mates or going to work or all of the things that we miss out on so it's never ever to minimize or dismiss how they feel but to allow them to talk about it and you to give them a hopeful sense of things to remind them look we will come through this and isn't it nice that dot 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 and remind them of things that they can feel grateful for they have you there in that moment so they can be grateful for you they can be grateful for the time that they are having been able to spend time with you they can be grateful for food in the fridge and the games that you're playing and whatever else. And you can do that with the children. So we have, by my children's bed, we have a, a tin that we put, um, a jar, sorry, not a tin, that we put things that we feel grateful for in the day. And we put them in there and it helps them to focus on the things they feel grateful for. So it's about acknowledging how they're feeling, asking them how they feel, asking them what they know. And also you allowing... Uh, directing them to think about things in a more positive way now ultimately how our children feel will come from our response to this so if you find that you are feeling really anxious about this then there are absolutely lots and lots of things that you can do to help yourself i'm showing up on facebook and instagram every weekday and i'm doing self-development lives so come and follow me and i'll be there too and you know that if you're in the same boat as me then i will get it on a different level so you're more than welcome to come and sit and chat to me in those spaces. But when you work on your own self-development and you can keep your levels of panic to a minimum, then you can show your children, you can lead the way for your children. And when they have those moments of feeling grief for their lost person, it's just the same as every other time, guys. It's about cuddling them. It's about being there. And it's about letting them have an outlet. You know, I let my children get angry if they feel angry about it. I let them swear in their own space. I let them jump up and down and punch their pillows and get mad and scream if they need to. I, I encourage them to be creative about the way that they're feeling. Now, not every child will be associating the grief that they're feeling we're feeling about this loss of being able to go out the house with their person but they might still be feel you know it might still be an unrest within them but they might not have logically connected the two and also you might be feeling that and they might not be so it's just being it's staying aware of your emotions and where you are at and where your children are at it's always about love and connection and being honest with each other i cannot stress enough how much open dialogue will help your children and you also sharing with them when you're not feeling a great, but not making it a scary thing. So I will say to my children, you know what? I felt really sad about dad today. I heard a song on the radio, made me cry and we'll have a cuddle. And they're okay with that. They know that I'm also a human being then, but they, and they can know that it's okay to feel that way, but it doesn't feel scary because I never go in, I never allow them to see any kind of crazy panic because they can know that I'm their safe space too. But I just want to send you so much love, guys. This is a crazy journey that we're on and we really are truly in this together. If you are struggling with this in any way, then please do reach out to people. People are more willing than ever right now to help other people because we are all in this grief, whether it's a person or it's the, the loss of this year. So I'm sending you tons and tons of love. I know that Grief Encounter are doing lots to try and help people in our position. So do reach out.